All right, welcome to today's show. And today we are going to talk about how I find the best trades. I mean, I'm showing you my three step process on how I find the trades to take every single day and how I have made thus far more than $65,000 this year. Anyhow, does that sound good? Then let's get started. This show is about real money and real trades. I'll show you the trading strategies that I personally trade, the tools that I use to trade my own accounts, and we will talk about the right mindset of a trader. Now, talking about mindset, I'm going to show you how to create SRC profits. And SRC stands for systematic, repeatable, and consistent, because that is the key to long-term success in the market. So if you are sick of all the hype and empty promises, and you want to learn trading strategies that actually work, then Click on like right now and let's get started. All right, fantastic. So let's jump in right away. I'm going to show you my live account. And this is where you see this is an account that I've been trading here live on YouTube together with you. And thus far, I've realized more than $65,000. Now I put $250,000 in cash into this. Uh, so since it is a margin account, I got $500,000 in buying power, but hey, overall thus far a solid result because after all, today is April 15th. Used to be tax day, but uh, hey, with the pandemic, everything is different. And today I want to show you my three step process of how exactly I find these trades. And I want to show you two very specific examples of trades that I took today. One of these trades I send out to you and the, the other trade, uh, well, it was so quickly disappearing, but I want to show you how I found it, how I execute it. And uh, this is basically the three step approach. So let's get started and let's talk about this. So step number one, this is where I use the tool, the PowerX Optimizer, and I'm using the wheel scanner. And I want to show you exactly what this does because the strategy that I use is called the wheel strategy and the wheel strategy means that you are first selling puts to collect premium. Number two, you may or may not get assigned the stock. And uh, if you are getting assigned, you move on to step number three, where you're selling calls. Pretty sure that you're familiar with this strategy. If not, I'll link to a, a playlist in the description. And as you can see, we also have a book that you can get on my website for $4.95 that explains all of this in detail. Anyhow, so let me show you exactly what I do and what I did this morning. So I'm jumping over to PowerX Optimizer and here in the upper right hand corner, this is where you see the scanner and the scanner updates every two minutes and every two minutes it is showing me a list of stock. And as you can see right now, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 stocks in there that meet my criteria. And first of all, what is the technical criteria that lo I'm looking for? Well, the technical criteria is, and I can write it down here, okay? I want to make at least 30% annualized in premium that I'm collecting. So this is my criteria. And in order to do this, uh, so the scanner found 13 stocks. Now, this here, what you see is the new version of PowerX Optimizer. So it is PowerX Optimizer 2.0. And if you are currently an owner of PowerX Optimizer, you have received an email from me earlier today or from my team that invited you to a beta. And a beta means that you can have access to the same version that I'm using here right now and test drive it for the next few days. So this is for current owners. So here's what I do. Um, first of all, I know that all of these 13 stocks are already meeting my criteria. And what I'm doing right now is that I'm looking at the chart to identify support and resistance, mainly support. So this is where uh, we go to step number two. Okay. And step number two is, is there support? And that basically means, um, okay, do I want to own the stock at the strike price that is coming up on the scanner? So let me show you an example. So here, for example, American Airlines comes up with a strike price, as you can see, of 20 or 20 and a half. So this means that I would sell, uh, marking it right here. Uh, oops. 
there we go. Uh, it's almost 20 and a half. You get the idea. It's uh, 20.43. Okay, let's be absolutely exact here if I can. No, I can't. So it doesn't matter. You, you get the idea. So the key question here is, do I want to own American Airlines at a price of 20 and a half? And uh, as I'm looking back here at American Airlines and I'm going to uh, pre-pandemic levels and I'm looking at 2019, I see that, well, American Airlines has been trading very solidly between 26 and 38. So it seems to be a good company to buy at $20.50. And again, this is my main criteria here. Do I want to own the stock at the strike price? However, in the short run, I believe with all the uncertainty that is going on with the pandemic right now, that the airlines might be hurt. I mean, you might have heard about this a few days ago, the vaccine of Johnson & Johnson got labeled as uh, potentially dangerous and uh, therefore it is paused right now. So do we have uh, some problems here with the vaccination? It also seems that around the world, uh, the, the outbreaks are, are flaring up uh, here in the United States. It seems to be under control, but worldwide there's a problem. So do I really want to own American Airlines? Because as you see, they dropped down as low as $8. So is this a good price to, um, to own them? And this is where I can flag them as uh, saying yes, no, or maybe. You see, for American Airlines, I said, yeah, maybe I'll take a look at this later. Then we have Baidu. And uh, so Baidu, a Chinese st uh, stock, as you know. And uh, this is coming up here at a strike price. Oops. Oh, it just disappeared. Okay, so this happens that when this criteria no longer exists after the two minutes, it disappears. Okay, anyhow. So let's take a look at CZR, Caesars Entertainment. Again, technically, it meets my criteria. And here right now uh, for Caesars, let me just bring it up to make sure that I have the right strike prices here. Ah, this is why it is called a beta version. It doesn't seem to update the strike price right now. So let me just uh, refresh it here. Sometimes the easiest way to get the software to do what you want it to do is by hitting the good old refresh button. Now, of course, as soon as I do it and want to show it to you here live, it doesn't do it. Anyhow, so uh, let me just show you the, the two stocks that came up this morning that I liked. And the first one that came up was Play. So Play came up with a strike price of 4150. And this is where I said, okay, do I want to own Play, which is Dave and Buster at 4150? And I'm just looking back and zooming out a little bit. And I see that uh, while well, pre-pandemic, before uh, the coronavirus hit, They've been solidly trading at around, uh, what here, 38, as you can see. They've been trading as high as 64. And I thought, you know what? I am okay owning play Dave & Buster's here at 41.50. So this is where I sold puts um, that expire. I believe, let me just look at the account here really quick of what I did with play. Okay, so I sold puts that expire next Friday. So the idea here is, that we are staying above 41.50 by next Friday. And I just want to mark this here so that you see this is the date. So here is what happens if I'm right. So the premium collected today, so uh, premium collected. Well, first of all, uh, let's take a look at this. I sold 24 contracts and I sold them at $50 each, uh, 50 cents each and since Options come in 100 packs, that's $50. So uh, premium collected is 24 contracts times $50. So this is $1,200. $1,200 for a little bit over a week. Today is, uh, is uh, April the 15th. So in here it expires on April 23rd. So in eight days, this is not bad at all, right? Because this means that I'm making $150 a day. Now, if it closes above $41.50, I'm getting assigned and I am okay with this because this is where I decided I want to own the stock at $41.50. The other one that popped up this morning was Schwab. Schwab reported earnings and uh, as a result of this, they plummeted down and there was some really good premium in there. So uh, I sold the uh, $63.50 and uh, let me just show you how much money I made there. So I sold 16 for 14 cents. Now this is expiring tomorrow. So there's a different play, right? So 
uh, the premium collected here was, uh, what did I say, 16 times 14. So let's bring up the handy dandy calculator to see how much that is. And uh, so 16 times 14 is 224. So obviously much less, much less than the premium that I collected here for play, but this is a play that expires tomorrow. So we want to make sure that uh, tomorrow, April 16th, yeah, if Schwab closes above uh, 63.50, I'm just collecting the premium and have nothing else to do. If uh, Schwab goes below 63.50 by tomorrow, this is when uh, I'm getting assigned. So the important criteria here is for the wheel scanner, right, is the so-called premium premium per day. And uh, I'm abbreviating it PPD. And uh, here is my criteria in order for my account size to make the 30% annualized in premium, I want to see at least $100 per day. So um, I already sh showed you the example. So let me just bring up here the two examples. So example pen, okay. And uh, this is where we collect uh, $1,200 in eight days, okay, because it expires next Friday. So this year means that we are looking at uh, $150 per day, which means check, I meeting my criteria here. Uh, no, this was not for pen, this was for play. There we go. Play, and then we had Schwab, and Schwab was collect $224 in I don't know, do you want to count today as a day? Sure, we can do this and we can say two days. So this is uh, $112 per day. Because if you think about it, if I'm able to collect $100 per day and I want to be uh, in five positions at any given time. And as you can see right now, I am in one, two, three, four, five, six positions because I have this one troublemaker here, right? And we have talked about, right, we can talk about this here in a moment. This is just my one troublemaker in the account here, uh, but I'm flying a rescue mission and I'm fine with that. Anyhow, so uh, if we can do this, so times five positions, this would be $500 per day. Now, as you can see, I'm holding this for eight days. I'm holding this over the weekend. And this is where we say, okay, if I can make $500 per day, and since I'm holding it over the weekend, we're taking 360 days. So this would be $180,000 per year. And I'm doing this on a $250,000 cash, uh, which is a $500,000 margin account. So, and as you can see, uh, this is a, a little bit more than the 30% annualized, um, as you can see here. So uh, let's just see if we take our handy dandy calculator and take the 180,000. Uh, divide this by uh, 500,000, uh, then we see it is 36%. So there we go. So this would be 36%. So this is my goal. Uh, sometimes I achieve the goal, sometimes I do not. So if we just uh, see uh, thus far, I've realized $65,000 in profits. So this is realized. Now I do have unrealized profits and losses, and we'll see how this turns out. Uh, and this is in uh, what, three and a half months? No, four and a half months. So if we divide this, so right now I'm basically on track to make a, a little bit more than the 36% uh, than the here that I have as a goal. It seems that right now I'm on track on making probably around $200,000 for the year. Okay, anyhow, so one more thing that we need to do uh, because we, we skipped step number three, right? And step number three that I always, always, always do is to check, is there any negative news? And uh, here's how I do this, because sometimes uh, if something appears to be too good to be true, then uh, yeah, it, it is, right? So what I do here is I just Google the stock, for example, S. W, uh, S C H W stock. Let me show you exactly how I do this. So I'm going here to S C W stock 
and uh, all I need to do now is click on news. See, when you click on news here, it shows you exactly if there are any negative news. And uh, see, Charles Schwab falls as higher expenses eat into Q1 earnings. So this is the reaction that we had today. So there are some negative news, but it's not a, a lawsuit. It's not that they're uh, declaring bankruptcy or something like this. So what I'm mainly concerned about here is um, lawsuits. I'm mainly concerned about uh, clinical trials because when they do have a clinical trial, then uh, it might be that it goes well and everything is would be IA or it does not go well and it's like uh, 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 um, and possible bankruptcies. Bankruptcy. So these are the, the key things that I'm looking for when I look for negative news. So as you can see, it's really not rocket science. Uh, the, the most important thing for me here is to have a tool that helps me to make the very best decisions here. And uh, yeah, I, I've shown you the prototype. I need to see, does the prototype uh, return any results right now? Otherwise, uh, I'll show it to you on the, uh, on the regular version because uh, that is already out. I'm just uh, checking here very quickly on my other screen uh, if it works. And yes, it does again. So we can go back to this. And uh, again, this is where right now we have, for example, GameStop is uh, is popping up, uh, as you can see here, at various strike prices, at a strike price of 125, 128. And the key question here is, do I want to own GameStop at these levels? Uh, do I want to own it uh, at around 125, right? This is step number two. And honestly, I don't want to. I mean, you might be different, uh, but for me, GameStop is not a company that I would like to have long term in my portfolio. So easy enough here. This is where I can simply say, no, this does not make sense at all. So don't like this. Uh, what about GSX? Uh, so GSX, it's also a company that I do not like, never liked it. And recently it got in trouble when the one hedge fund got liquidated. And right now you could actually get some decent premium if you're selling the, the 15 strike price. And oh my gosh, this is way down here. So this is not good because uh, you see this when whenever you see that there is a, a lot of money in a strike price that is that low, right? A current price. So this is a drop of 38%. You can see it here, right? A drop of 38% and I'm still getting a lot of premium. So there's probably some bad news. I don't even have to look for this. If it is too good to be true, it is. Okay, Neo, not a big fan, especially since I am in right right now. So I only like to be a little bit diversified and not be in all of electric car makers here right now. But as you can see, Neo, if you want to, if uh, you want to label it as a maybe, right now you have a possibility to um, sell the 31 strike price, so it's down here. So it's a drop of 12% actually. See it right here, it could drop 12% and you're good until next uh, Friday. So today is April 15th, so we have uh, Friday in a week. So this is why I marked it as a, as a maybe. Dave and Busters, yes, I like this. So I'm uh, actually showing this here as a yes. And uh, plug, not a big fan of plug, but you see, fairly uh, easy to label it. Uh, Riot, I was looking into it this morning and I thought, you know what, Riot might actually uh, be cool because as you can see right now, you can pick up some really nice premium for next week at the 32 level. Look at this. So this is not bad, right? I mean, do you want to own Riot at 32? This is the key question that you need to ask yourself, right? Uh, so do I want to own the stock at the strike price? And if you don't want to own the stock at the strike price, don't trade it. Uh, this is where sometimes I see that uh, traders say, well, I got, uh, I got into what SPCE. For me, that's crazy stock. So, I mean, SPCE, look at this. Uh, it's Richard Branson's space company. And uh, I mean, it went all the way up from what? $20 to $60. And then came crashing down to $20. Then it bounced back to $30 then now it's down to $23. I mean, this is where, if it is too good to be true, I mean, don't, don't trade it. So uh, this is where here, SPCE, for me, it was a clear no. That's for me a clear no. SPWR, uh, Sun Power Corporate, um, 
not the biggest fan of this one. I haven't labeled it yet, but if I haven't labeled it yet as yes, no, or maybe, it means that it just popped up on the scanner and I haven't had a chance. So here uh, we're looking at a strike price of 23. Uh, I don't know, this is another company, as you can see, uh, it went from what? Uh, nothing from $2, $3, all the way up to $56. Uh, crashed down to $38, went back up to $52, and right now seems to be on a downward trajectory. So for me, this is not uh, the best. So this is where I want to, it disappeared, but I would like to label it as uh, as a no. Uh, C's just popped up, and uh, C's, C World Entertainment. Uh, let's take a look at this one here. Uh, at this one, okay, uh, a strike price of 47 See, this is where for me right now, this would be a little bit too close because if you look back, uh, C's, SeaWorld Entertainment has never traded as high as it does right now. So it has been a pandemic winner. And I'm asking myself, why? Why are they a pandemic winner here? That's, that seems to be odd, seems to be counterintuitive, right? Because uh, it seems that most um, amusement parks over the past year have been struggling, right? So for me, this story does not make sense. Do I like to own it at 47? No. So this is why I would mark this as a no. Now, here's the cool thing. After you've done it, I can sort by flag and I just have to look at these two that I like and I say, okay, between play and riot, which one do I like better? So play, uh, do I want to own this at a strike price of 4150? Because that is what's suggested here versus riot. Uh, do I want to own it at a strike price of 33? And this is where you make a call and you might trade one of them, you might trade both of them. Uh, and this is where you simply click on uh, add to calculator. This brings up the calculator right now and you see, okay, right now Riot trading at this price, this is a strike price. Here is uh, how much I can get right now if I'm trading it. Here's the amount of contracts that I should sell according to my account settings, which are up here. Right, so if you have a different account size, let's see, you have a buying power of uh, maybe, maybe you have a buying power of $40,000, right? So you would set it here and instead of 30 contracts, you would try two contracts, which is fine. Or maybe you have even less. Maybe uh, you have $10,000 in cash and you have $20,000 in buying power. Well, in this case, you would trade one contract. So super easy here, right? Uh, or um, what did I do earlier? Play, so we can bring this up here. So um, I'm going to play and I'm adding this. And uh, so I'm adding it to the calculator. Uh, what did I get for this? Uh, let me just uh, quickly <clears throat> uh, sign in again because it signed me out of my account. So for play at the 4150, I got 50 cents. Okay, so I plug, can plug it in here. This is what I got earlier. Uh, you could have traded one contract if you have only $10,000 and $20,000 in buying power. So for me, with uh, $500,000 in buying power, right, I would trade, uh, as you can see, 24 contracts, and this is exactly what I traded. And as you can see, thus far, up nicely 16% in just a day. That's not bad at all. Schwab is up, uh, what, 35% in just a day. That's not bad at all. Disney, uh, which I entered, uh, when did I enter Disney? Let's take a look at this. Three days ago, it's now at 80% of the maximum profits. Uh, pen, which I entered three days ago, is at 84% of the maximum profit. So this is not bad at all, wouldn't you say? Okay, so uh, let's just recap, uh, where are we? So how do I find the best trades to trade? Uh, my three-step process is uh, I'm try like to make my life simple and easy by using the PowerX Optimizer and running the wheel scanner because I have my criteria uh, that I wrote down here where I want to make uh, on a $250,000 cash uh, around $180,000 per year. That would be $15,000 per month. And for me, this is trading for a living. I can cover my living expenses with $15,000 per month. Anyhow, so this is number one where I get the technical criteria. Now, this is where it needs a trader. This is where you have to say, is there support? And do I want to own this stock? at the strike price. And this is where you simply go through the scanner and say, yes, no, maybe. And you can flag it super easily and say, yes, no, maybe. And uh, you can go back then to the maybes and uh, say, okay, let's take a look at no another look at NEO. Do I really want to own it at 31? Or is this a stock where it feels right now 
that it is going down and I don't want to own it even at 31 and that's a decision that you have to make. So you just very simply flag it there. And then finally, is there any negative news? Um, because if it is too good to be true, like in GSX, right, you should definitely look up GSX stock, uh, do it on Google, click on news, right, and then click on news, right, super easy. So you just go to, uh, to GSX stock, for example, GSX stock, click on news and uh, look at this. There is a, a Grizzly report, maybe something similar like the Hindenburg report. So let's take a look at this of what's happening here. Uh, many others say a rating of hold. So you can just read through this fairly quickly and make an informed decision. So that's basically, this is my three-step approach to finding the best trades. Hey, I hope this helps. And in a moment, I'm going to uh, look at your questions here, answer your questions live, uh, because this is part of the live show. But if you enjoyed this video thus far, do me a favor and click on like really quick, because this way more people will see it. If you would like to see more videos like this, where I share my trades, and these are real live trades. This is not hypothetical. These are trades that I took earlier this morning, just a few hours ago. If you like this, then uh, click on subscribe and hit the little notification bell. This way you get notified whenever I release a new video. And also, if you're enjoying this video, others might as well share the love, share the video, uh, right? Uh, share it on Reddit, on Twitter, on Facebook, or just by email, forward it to a friend. I'm sure that they will appreciate it. All right, fantastic. So let's see what questions we have here. Uh, it's so good to see you here live and uh, oh my gosh, you're a little bit lazy today. Click on like, do me a favor, click on like and then I'll answer some more questions. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so Louis says, I'm brand spanking new to investment fresh out of the box. After I play around in the same box, how much of my own real money should I have to invest for starters? Well, it really depends what kind of strategy you are trading, right? So for example, if you like to trade the Power X strategy, you can get started with as little as $5,000 or $10,000, right? $5,000 in cash, $10,000 in buying power. Better is $10,000 in cash, gives you $20,000 in buying power, you get started there. For the wheel trades, this is where I recommend that you have at least $20,000, right? This gives you $40,000 in buying power. So uh, Luis, I, I would go with the minimum that is required by the strategy. So depending on what you want to trade, uh, the strategy that you want to trade usually recommends uh, a minimum that you should have in your account. And I would go with the minimum for the first three months because there's always a tradition uh, transitioning from being in the sandbox on a simulator to live trading. Okay, good. Um, Louis says, is it better to invest in stocks or options? You can do both. I'm doing both. Um, when you want to trade options, uh, you have two possibilities. You can buy options or you can sell options. And uh, I did a video, uh, it's called Options 101. It's actually a playlist. I'll link to it in the description. And in this playlist, I explain the differences between buying and selling. Also, I have another video where I compare the two strategies that I have here the Power X strategy, which is basically buying options and trading stocks and trading stocks and the wheel strategy, which is an options trading strategy, right? So I'll link to the video here in the description and this way you can take a look at it and see what is better for you. Okay, so good to see everybody it. And uh, John says, I got to sign in seven of my last 11 trades. I must be doing something wrong. Yes, I think John, that you might trade too aggressively, right? That you are uh, just, take trades because the premium looks good. And this is why I said today, it is so important. Do you want to own the stock at the strike price? If so, then getting a sign is a good thing. Then you're probably saying, hey, I got a sign in seven out of the last 10 trades. And if you say, oh, I got a sign, seven of the last 10 trades, then you didn't follow rule number two here, step number two, that you really want to own it, okay? Uh, but great question here, great question, okay. So let's see. And uh, Edwin ordered the wheel book last night. That is fantastic. Uh, we are shipping them out daily. So if you ordered last night, it was probably shipped today. So it will be on uh, uh, on your way. Okay. John says, who's the one knucklehead that gives a thumb down rating before the video even started? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they might not like the thumbnail that we had here. Okay. Joseph got uh, the gift coffee mug. That's good. I have mine too here. Mm. Markets just closed. Fantastic. Okay. 
Good. Uh, so Mike says, love the wheel, ordered the book, started with $50,000 and I'm already up $5,500. Uh, $5, That's great. Should I try to get assigned or try to avoid it? Have heard you say both. Let me show, I want to show you some real results. Okay. So let me just show you exactly um, the stocks that I got assigned at. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to transactions and I'm going to the uh, last 120 days and uh, there's probably a way receive and deliver here we go so um let, let's just see i was assigned in gdxj so i'm looking at my profits year to date and i'm sorting it by how much money it made gdxj i was assigned i made twenty thousand dollars out of the sixty five thousand dollars so not bad at all right so let's go back what else i was assigned on ride as you can see here so right, I made thus far $6,800. Now, again, this is uh, the one troublemaker. I did several videos on this, on how I fly rescue missions on right. So I have another rescue mission on. So take a look at the video. Also, I think I talked about it a few days ago in the previous episode on Monday. Anyhow, so this is uh, the, the third most profits realized here. Uh, let's go back. What else? Uh, did we do here oops sorry that's uh, what i wanted to go transaction uh this is all right gdxj apple i got assigned on apple let's take a look at the profits year to date apple is right here if we look at the top five trades right um top six trades one two three four five six can't really count math is not an exact science <laughs> no but you don't have to be great in math so here uh that worked uh what else where else did i get assigned I got assigned uh, UAL, uh, HAL, Uber, WIN, okay? UAL, HAL, Uber, WIN. Can we remember this? Uh, take a look at this. HAL, Uber, WIN, right? I mean, uh, out of the, the trades that I got assigned, I want to say probably the most profits that I made were on the trades that I got assigned. By the way, UAL, because it's all the way down here, actually did not get assigned. So this was a mistake. Uh, this is where they said you got assigned. And then you see right here, it says uh, no reversal of assignment. They made a mistake here. So I never got assigned UAL. Anyhow, uh, going back to your question, uh, let's see, Mike asked it, uh, is it good to be assigned? Usually this is when you make more money when you're getting assigned. So it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Okay, Wazir says, uh, did anyone get access to the new version of the software if you applied for it? So we send out an email and you say, if you would like to have access to the software, uh, you have to go to a very special secret link that I will not mention here. So team, do not put the link in here. Please do not because it's only for customers. Super important, okay? So it's only if you have it, then you have both. You have the existing version 1.0 and you have the version 2.0. Wazir, if you are an existing customer, uh, check your email. It's probably coming from the Rockwell team and yes. And John, uh, yes, it was sent to all owners. Uh, if you have not received it, uh, call or text the office or send an email to support at rockwelltrading.com. However, you have to be an owner. If you're not an owner, uh, you don't get access to the new version. No, I mean, it's super easy, but yeah. Um, good. So uh, yeah, the mastermind group had it since uh, Monday, I would say. And today I open it to a few more people. Okay. Prabhakar from India. Hey, so good. Uh, yep. Charlie received your email, uh, his email. Perfect. Good. So uh, Frank says it is advisable to take wheel candidates for stock trading as well. Uh, not option only. Well, the, the wheel strategy is really a combo strategy, Frank, uh, for trading stocks and options. So it works best if you want to trade both. If you only want to trade stocks, I highly recommend that you look at PowerX Optimizer. So there's a, a few stocks that I have been trading recently, according to the PowerX Optimizer. One of them was STAA. And as you can see, this is where I closed STAA this morning or yesterday with a really nice full profit. Uh, let me just uh, switch here to the thicker bars. Um, this way it's a little bit easier to see. So I bought it back here and I closed it out as a nice profit. Uh, so ZG was another trade that I took. Uh, got in a few days ago. Today we had a black bar, so I exited it with a small loss. Uh, I am currently still in IIVI. Uh, so these are a few stock trades that I took recently. And uh, this is where, Frank, I say, if you prefer only stocks, look at the PowerX strategy. That might be 
might be a little bit better. Okay? Good, good, good. All right. So let's see. Um, Eduardo says, did you reduce your buying power that is allocated to ride to continue to having fried, uh, to ride to continue having five trades in the wheel, treating ride as separate trade? Yes, I did. I'm trading ride as a separate trade. So yeah, because uh, this is where um, you see what what is a, a long term trade? A long term investment is a short term investment gone bad. And this is what it is. So ride has now become a longer term investment because my break even I can show you. I mean, there's no secret. You have been following me here. I'm not hiding anything. You see, others are hiding their losses and say, oh, yeah, I never have a losing trade. I only have winning trade. No, I mean, I, I have losing trades and I have trades where that do not go well. So you see, my current break even, my original break even was at 2150. Right now is at 1790. And you see it closed today at $9.80. So it has to climb back $10 here. So I'm still trying to lower my cost, but uh, this is not going to happen within one week, right? I mean, obviously, this is where I will be in this trade probably for the next few months. And uh, if you want to follow along, click on subscribe. Then you can follow along of how I'm doing with my trade here and how I'm climbing out of the hole if I do. Well, I shouldn't say this because I've been doing it for a long time. I know what I'm doing. So for me, it's when I climb out of the hole. So this is when anyhow. Good, good, good. So uh, Barry says I have a really good win loss ratio. Yeah, I can't complain. Very happy thus far. Very happy. OK. Well, dear says have the software. OK, fantastic. Ricardo, I know you are just a rock star. Profit $65,000 in three months. That is awesome. And Ricardo is also a part of our mastermind group. So, so excited for you. Okay, good, good, good. Um, so Joe says, a short, short seller research also a factor in negative news. You can include this, Joe. I mean, it's it's actually a good idea, probably. Um, you just have to see right now, it's a hot topic that is being picked up by the news, right? So it could be clickbait here. Um, so anyhow. Okay, uh, Mark says, could you please tell us why Apple is not a troublemaker anymore? Absolutely, very easy because uh, Apple, I was assigned at 133. So the strike price that I got assigned was 133. And as you can see right now, Apple is trading at 134.50. So this is where right now on Apple, I'm actually making some good money. As you can see, $1,500 right now uh, today on Apple. So overall, I have another $1,000 that will be tagged into this. So uh, I just need to see by the end of the week, if it stays above 133.75, my shares will get called away and I'll make uh, around $1,800. So this is what we are looking for by the end of the week. So this is why it's not a troublemaker anymore. And this is where you see you, you got to have a plan. You got to have a plan. Did I, did I want to own shares at 133 at that point? Yes. Did it work out? Yes. Do stocks usually bounce back up if they're solid stocks? This is why it's so important that you need to check the news, right? Uh, so is there any negative news? So you don't want to you don't want to catch a falling knife, right? So like GSX, GSX is crazy trade. Don't trade this, right? And uh, SBC is crazy trade. Don't trade it. I mean, just just because it pops up on the scanner, it's only step number one, right? Do you really want to own SBC or GSX? I mean, just do a little bit of research and you'll see like, no, probably not. Now, right again, this is a trade at the time. I did want to own it right now. I don't want it anymore. But you see, this is a, a trade way back in the day. So I just want to show you here, um, right? I actually did this uh, trade back here when when right was at 26. And then, yeah, right now I don't want to own it. So I'm getting rid of it and uh, I'm flying a rescue mission here. OK, anyhow, good, good, good. So let's see. And uh, Lady Stone says GSX, my promise. Don't get into these crazy stocks. Do not trade these crazy stocks. Just don't do it. OK, good. So yeah, uh, if I was assigned at 133. This is why it's not. Yeah, and uh, you see the GSX. Uh, this is where it's very similar. Let me just show you. Uh, I think uh, let me just go back to the wheel analyzer. What did we just see uh, where something popped up that also looked too good to be true? Was it actually GSX? Uh, yeah. See GSX where right now, uh, I mean, yeah, this can drop 38% and you're still making 73% annualized return. I mean, this doesn't make sense. This does not make sense. So this is where there's problem. There's trouble here. 
Um, so same with Riot. Be a little bit careful here, right? I mean, Riot can drop 29%. You see, it can drop 29% and you're still making 35% RI analyzed. So be a little bit careful. When it is too good to be true, when it looks too good to be true, it usually is. Okay. Good. Um, so Leroy says, is trading SPY and S&P futures redundant? It's slightly different. The S&P futures are mirroring the S&P even closer. Uh, you get more leverage with futures. I have been trading futures for the longest time. I'm not doing it anymore. Anyhow. Good. Giorgio uh, sold the Mara 48 put. I hope it won't go down tomorrow if I get assigned. What do you think about it? If you don't want to get assigned, don't trade it. <laughs> and I don't know how much clearer I can say this. If you don't want to own Mara at the strike price, do not trade it. And I'm, I'm really saying it like this right now so that it gets in your head and that you hear me saying it my, my German accent and maybe I'll do another mug for some money and say, if you don't want to own the stock, don't sell puts at it. Uh, rule number one of the Wheel Club. Uh, I have posted it somewhere. Uh, it's like from Fight Club, right? If you don't want to own the stock, don't do it. So uh, very important here. Anyhow, so this were um, Teresa. Uh, I mean, Teresa is also part of our mastermind and has uh, lots of experience with uh, with cryptocurrencies. She has actually written a paper on it. It's really amazing. Uh, so anyhow, this where you have a, probably a different outlook on Mara and you say, you know what, if I'm getting a sign on Mara, this is awesome. So that's super important. OK, so Eduardo, do you close all trades at 90 percent on Friday or let them expire? Usually on Friday, I just let them expire, um, usually. Right. I mean, if it is close to the strike price and I don't want to own the stock, I'm getting out of there. Showed you earlier right now I'm in six trades, so I might close out one tomorrow. Well, we'll see what happens tomorrow. OK, so Barbara says, what about positive news? Is it not relevant? No, uh, because I really want to look for really, really bad news here. OK, good, good, good. Jim, yes, need to update my reminders for the new schedule. Yeah, I'm doing it twice a week now. I used to do it three times a week. Uh, right now, twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays, I'm going li uh, going live here on YouTube. All right. OK, great help, especially using the new PXO V2. Yeah, I, I, I like do you like the uh, the flagging, right, where you can say yes, no, maybe. And this way uh, you can very quickly see. Um, let's go back here, uh, which you what you haven't flagged yet. Right. So you see you can sort it by flag and then you see, oh, there's three that popped up that I have not flagged just yet. Uh, four actually, AL, RAD, and VLO. So super easy uh, to quickly see which ones do I need to take a look at, which ones do I already like, and uh, which ones are possible maybes. So I, I, I like it a lot. And uh, yes, we make the colors a little bit more popping because I know that right now it's difficult to distinguish between orange and red. So yes, it's that's why it's called a beta version. Beta version means it's not yet ready for production. So right now uh, we are releasing a new beta version every day. So if you're part of the beta group, if you are an owner, uh, you will see that there's new improvements every single day. OK, good, good, good. Uh, Bernard, if you haven't received an email, um, email support at rockwelltrading.com and they can help you out. OK, uh, Spiritfire says, what is the best broker for Europe? It depends on where in Europe you are and what you have structured. Uh, so, for example, I right now I'm in the process of moving my account to trade year. If you want to learn more about this, go to rockwelltrading.com slash broker. However, depending on where in Europe you are, you might or might not be able to open an account with them. I would try this first. If you can open an account with them, I think that's your best choice. Did the video on this. I'll link to it in the description. If not, uh, I think interactive brokers is a great choice uh, for uh, for Europeans. OK, good, good, good. Uh, right below 10, what now? Um, that's it's actually good. I want to lower my cost basis, so I sold 10 puts. I'll talk about it probably next week, so we'll see what happens here uh, tomorrow and we'll see what happens over the weekend because, as you know, Ride is participating in the San Felipe 250, the Baja race. Uh, so we'll see how well they do. And uh, so let's see what happens on Monday. So in Monday's Coffee with Marcus, we can talk about it in more detail. And if you would like to be part of this, then uh, click on subscribe, hit the little notification bell. This way uh, you get notified whenever I go live or release a new video. 
All right, Timothy says, I ordered the wheel book. Uh, when will it ship out? We are shipping them out daily. So if you ordered it yesterday, uh, depending on when the cutoff was, we might have uh, we might have shipped it out uh, ye yesterday. Otherwise, we're doing it today. Okay, so um, let's see. And uh, yeah, twenty-five thousand dollars in margin account gives you fifty thousand uh, dollars in buying power. And yeah, Nicole just said it. Uh, books are shipped the next business day. So if you order it on a Saturday or Sunday, it'll be shipped on Monday, but we are shipping it there. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, so Kevin, been waiting for the PXO to better and the FSD better button for my Tesla. <laughs> I know, I know, getting there. Okay, uh, so can I sort the watch list in my broker if I don't have the PowerX software to select a stock to trade? I don't know, I don't know who your broker is, Hector. Maybe does it... See, I have not found a software that can do what PowerX Optimizer does. This is why I had development team program it for my needs. I'm using it every day. I couldn't, I couldn't really trade without it. I, I mean, I, I probably could. Would I be as successful as I am without PowerX Optimizer? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. Okay. Good, good, good. So let's see, uh, Spirit. Oh, we talked about the best broker in Europe. Uh, how do I get your optimizer? Uh, contact the team. We often have specials. I don't know if you're running a special right now. So uh, just call or text them if you're in the US. If you're in Europe right now, just send them an email to support at rockwelltrading.com. Say, hey, I attended coffee with Marcus. Marcus mentioned that there might be a special. Do you have a special right now? How can I get this? And uh, we will, the team will take care of you. Okay. Good. Uh, so what happens when a stock disappears from the wheel scanner? It means that it no longer meets our criteria. So what you can do in this point, uh, if, if it happens, you can still enter it manually in the calculator. So the cool thing is just uh, it helps you here. If the stock is there, you can just hit plus and it will automatically add it to the calculator, as you can see here. Uh, if the stock disappeared, the criteria that we make at least 30% per year analyzed have not been given and you can just enter it here. So for example, you can enter pen and then you say whatever strike price it is. Um, I'm just making prices up here right now, uh, right? And then the strike price and then what premium you're getting. So you can absolutely enter it manually. Uh, the reason why it disappears is because it no longer meets our criteria here. Anyhow, cool. Well, is this helpful? Uh, if this has been uh, helpful here, uh, do me a favor and Click on like, this way more people will see it. And uh, also feel free to share this video. Well, uh, we are at the end of our time. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And uh, we will see you in the next one. By the way, I'm live back here in uh, 40 minutes from now at five o'clock Eastern time, where I give you a quick update on what the markets did today and what to expect for the remainder of this week, as well as going into the next week. If you would like to see this, click on subscribe, hit the little notification bell. This way you get notified whenever I go live. All right, have a great rest of your day and I will see you in a little bit, hopefully. Take care.